um, which is actually, you started kind of getting into, um, I mean, you dropped a big one, a big name, ESPN. So kind of start there and <laughs> tell us about your story, man. Like where um, you're previously a, a professional boxer. So kind of how did that come about? And then we'll dive into how that slowly stopped. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was born and raised in Chicago and uh, I started fighting at a young age, but really didn't get into it in the amateurs um, until, you know, about 18, 19 years old. But just always grew up an athlete playing a million different sports, obsessed with competition. But something about fighting really just kind of took off for me. I felt like I definitely had some abilities that were innate that I was born with hand eye coordination, speed, but a lot of it was kind of learned and learned on the job. I didn't have a big amateur career. Um, but I ended up going to the University of Notre Dame, studying finance there and continuing fighting while I was there, um, fighting in tournaments all over the country, fighting at Notre Dame. And sure enough, at about 21 years old, right before I graduated, I had an offer to turn pro from top rank. And for me, that was like getting a call from the New York Yankees, like mm -hmm. you know, top rank had signed Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya. It was really cool to get that call. And they discovered me and you know I had that moment where I ended up asking a lot of friends family mentors what should I do you know in, in one aspect I had this dream that you know I had worked so hard for and wanted to attain of becoming a world champion one day and really just going for this and on the other aspect you know I had other route to go maybe the business route entrepreneur route maybe finance um, so you know I was lucky that I had these choices but in my mind I knew that going for my dreams was the only choice I had. And I had a lot of friends and family that tried to d deter me from turning pro because they knew how dangerous the sport is. I mean, people literally die in the ring. They say all the time, you don't play boxing. Um, so for me, I knew the pain of regret would always outweigh any pain that, that I would, you know, incur in the sport. So I'm grateful, man. And it, my career just, it started taking off. Um, I ended up getting to about 12 and 0, undefeated, um, on top of the world, and fought in Madison Square Garden, Cowboy Stadium. Um, you know, fought on ESPN, HBO undercards. I, I felt immortal. I was about yeah, 26 years old. Um, but at that point, my life really altered and changed. Um, I started getting really sick. Um, I spent about almost two years in and out of hospitals and out of the ring, battling what we later found out was an autoimmune disease. Um, known as ankylosing spondylitis, which was only the beginning. It was just kind of uh, a snowball effect of pain and misery for me. It was the toughest time in my life. I was on eight different medications. I was in significant pain. I was getting massive flare-ups, daily headaches, um, you know, chronic back pain, joint pain. Um, I was depressed, so they put me on antidepressants. I was getting anxiety attacks. It was just everything in my life was crumbling apart. And it wasn't until I really started changing fundamentally my mindset on this and diving into health and wellness that it was a long but slow journey to get off those medications, get out of the hospital beds, get back into the ring and do something that most doctors said that I couldn't do. But even I felt like I couldn't do on my darkest days to where I ended up having nine more fights. I won a handful of titles, just fought. Uh, a year ago in the MGM Grand for a world title. Um, so that was a massive um, moment for me where, you know, I proved myself wrong. I felt like I proved the doctors wrong and I still deal with pain every single day. And ultimately it's why I chose to retire from my health. But um, it's been a crazy journey and incredible ups and downs and adrenaline rushes from, you know, as I mentioned, fighting in front of 20,000 people in that type of rush to, hospital beds and then back in the ring and kind of battling mentally back and forth and figuring out um, how to get healthy. So, you know, here I am recently retired. Um, I finished my career at 21 and one. Um, I ended up, you know, getting a number three in the world, you know, won a few belts along the way and just really grateful that I get to spend the next 70 years of my life helping other people get out of pain, manage pain and, you know, really just getting healthy myself. And, and how old are you right now? I'm 33. That's an impressive story in that amount of time. You know, like the amount of things you've seen and done, it's, it's crazy, man. I can imagine feeling like a superhero, kind of being untouchable at that point. Uh, can you explain a little bit deeper as to exactly what the autoimmune disease was and, and 
what the like symptoms you were suffering from were just because I think it's a and how rare is that autoimmune disease specifically yeah so ankylosing spondylitis in and of itself is basically an inflammatory disease that attacks your lower spine your vertebrae a lot of people refer to it as like bamboo spine where your spine will start to start to fuse together I was on Humira for years that I think helped but ultimately wasn't the long-term answer um, the issue with autoimmune diseases is they're tough to catch, they're tough to diagnose. In fact, most people that deal with an autoimmune disease, they spend, and I think an average of five to seven years getting properly diagnosed because you have all these different symptoms. I was dealing with chronic fatigue, I was dealing with anxiety, inflammation, and not just in my lower back. I mean, it was getting in my joints, I was dealing with head, um, headaches constantly. And so there were just so many different um, illnesses. So the ankylosing spondylitis was really one thing that kind of triggered a lot of things. Um, and with autoimmunity, I think a lot of people know that we're not entirely sure what causes it. I think that, you know, maybe I had a gene that was upregulated and, and I had, you know, I was, I had this gene HLA B27 that I was positive for that was an indicator for this type of disease. But at the end of the day, I believe in my heart two things. And I'm hope anybody listening with autoimmune disease kind of understands this. I don't see it as a life sentence. You know, they often say these autoimmune immune diseases, you have them for life. I don't see it that way. I see it as something I eventually will beat and conquer. And I think that's been massively important for my health and healing. Because the, the other thing about autoimmune diseases is um, so much of your mental and, and stress awareness plays a factor in that. So I spent years, a 10 year career in fight or flight. You know, I was constantly in that fight or flight never learning how to get into that parasympathetic rest, digest, heal mode. So I believe that was a huge catalyst for, and a thing that really kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back in a sense that ended up getting me into this mode where I was just getting so sick, my immune system was shutting down on me. Um, so it really took going through all that pain to kind of recognize that, realize that. And man, even to this day, I wake up in pain almost every single day. It's nowhere near where it was. I mean, I was completely addicted to painkillers. It was a dark road, but I'm learning how to manage it and I'm getting better and better. And I went from eight medications to zero and figuring out a way to live my life in a natural, sustainable, long-term way. Um, and that's kind of what I'm hopeful for. And I, I definitely want to get into some of the, the nitty gritty of the health stuff that you're doing, but we'll kind of save that towards the end. One thing I really want to kind of touch on is, is you talked about pain quite a bit there. And I think pain gives you so many lessons, right? And I think hardships in general, struggle in general can provide so many lessons if you seek them out, if you are purposely trying to find them, which comes from reflection and, and at that difficult reflection, because a lot of times you have to look at a situation and go, all right, like, what's the positive here? Like, what am I learning? And a lot of times it's a negative thing. So it's very hard to see that. What kind of things did you start doing and maybe like habits that you built from that experience that allowed you to have this more optimistic mindset now or this more positive and forward thinking mindset now absolutely and i love talking about how this that, that pain is a gift and you're exactly right that when you're in that moment it's so difficult whether it's mental physical spiritual it's so difficult to realize that this will be a gift right but it's really the only control you have like at the end of the day you can't control the cards you're dealt, you just control how you play them, right? So I learned that the hard way, but now one of the tricks I do is I constantly go back and I visualize, and even throughout my entire career, I was really getting into with sports psychologists, visualizing every single fight with extreme clarity, like hundreds of times in training camp for a big fight, I would literally close my eyes and visualize what it was gonna look like, what it was gonna smell like, what. Um, the blood and sweat would taste like, like literally with extreme detail, man. And so I ended up taking those skills that I learned that made me feel so comfortable, you know, on fight night when I jump in the ring and felt like I'd been there hundreds of times because I went through it in my head. I ended up correlating that to my health and pain. For instance, moments that I would get a big flare up or I'd have um, an issue of pain or a setback. I would close my eyes and visualize those moments in the past when I had that pain, right? And what I would do is I would think of that moment and how it felt hopeless, how it felt like there was, um, you know, nothing positive coming out of this. And I would see the positive that did come out of it, right? Because 
when you're in the moment, it's so damn difficult to realize how is this going to be a, a positive in my life? This is so terrible. It's so painful. But when you look back at your history and realize that, damn, I went through that business failure or I went through that physical pain or I went through that relationship breakup and I'm now a better person because of it, which everybody listening has one, maybe 10 things in their lives where something that you thought was the worst damn thing you're, that happened to you ended up being a blessing in disguise, right? So if you can sit back and sit in that moment again, if you've been there before, you can do it again, right? So that's really what I kept going back on on those days when, or, or days in training camp when I'd have a flare up and we couldn't spar or train for a couple of days, or you know I'd have setbacks where I would basically go back to the moment and think, you know, I've been there before, I, I can get there again. And I remember, for instance, one one of the most painful moments of my life was my last fight fought in front of thousands of people damn jam grand for a world title and i had this moment it was almost like an epiphany um they always video they always have the cameras in your face as you're getting out of the limo and like walking into the arena as you're walking into the dressing room for a fight and i had this weird moment where i'd never felt this for 22 other fights in my career as i'm getting out of the car and walking towards uh, my dressing room cameras in my face i'm smiling but I'm thinking to myself, am I going to go to a hospital tonight or am I going back to the hotel room? It was literally a thought that swept over me for a second and kind of shook me to my core. I had never had that thought in my mind ever with any of the other 220, 22 fights I had. I thought to myself, I'll die in the ring if I have to. That moment of pain, I think, and I eventually ended up losing the fight. I think that moment of pain was necessary because it taught me that I don't ever want to feel that again. For whatever reason it was, something switched in my mind and God, the universe put that pain in me and I realized I don't ever want to have that feeling. Am I wondering, am I going to die tonight? And I think that that was the catalyst for me retiring and that was a moment that I realized like the pain that I was going through wasn't worth continuing to fight and risking my life and you know hurting my family. So once again, that moment was extremely painful, but an extreme gift for me. I, I love that, man. Cause I think, you know, I, I, I have said this a bunch of times on, on this podcast, like doing hard things just because they're hard, make, it makes everything else easier to do. Right. So you're going to be more successful if you go through those difficult things. And I think it applies to this too. Once you go through that pain and you get through it and you're able to do that um, and trust that it's going to happen again, if you just push into resistance, which it's one of the hardest things for anybody to do, whether you're starting a business, trying to lose weight, you're in a sport, whatever it is, there's going to be a applied resistance that is just mentally hard to work through. But if you don't lean into that resistance, I think that that's where you kind of get in a standstill, you know, and I think what you said carries on so much with that. And I'm sure because you did those things now, a lot of the stuff you do today, you're like, this is easy. Like this is, it's easy for me to get motivated to do this stuff. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Uh I, I had the opportunity to have some like big speaking engagements and anytime you're speaking in front of people, you're always going to get nervous. Yeah. And I play this little trick in my head where I'm always like, man, what's the worst that's going to happen? Right? Like before the worst that was going to happen was I'm in the hospital. I, I get a, you know, I die possibly. So I'm like, man, when you think about it, maybe I get embarrassed. Maybe I stumble my words. Maybe I fail. I'm just, I'm not afraid of failure anymore. Like I think most people are. And that's, what's made me successful is that, I've been willing to fail. I've been willing to get knocked out in front of a million people on TV. Like, I don't care because I know that I'll get back up. So I think that's a healthy mindset to have for, you know, most people. Uh, my, uh, it reminds me of something my friend recently said to me, and, and I called it the success loop, right? And he was talking about most people, they, they seek motivation through podcasts like this, YouTube, whatever. And that motivation hopefully translates into action, which leads to results. But what he was saying is you need to start with action because action produces results and your own results are going to give you more motivation to keep taking action. So if we even like, you know, you getting on stage now, you're, you can think what's the worst that could happen. And I do that. I ask that same question with everything I do, because most of the time, the worst thing that could happen really isn't that big of a deal. And you're just talking yourself out of it in your mind. But if we go back to like what started this catalyst for you, it was just jumping in the ring. It was saying, fuck it and doing it anyway, right? Taking action on something scary. And that leads into more results, more motivation, back to action and continue. Does that make sense? Dude, the greatest moments in my life were the moments that scared the shit out of me before I did it. 
hands down the greatest fucking things that I accomplished that I, maybe I won, maybe I lost. I had that internal thing in me that was like, should you do this? Like, this is scary shit. And it ended up being the greatest moments of my life. So, um, you know, I think people need to hear that because you're not going to win. You're going to lose a lot, but looking back at it, you get so much more out of those moments that ended up scaring the shit out of you, but you still push through. Yeah. And I think that that point on not fearing failure is the big key there, you know, and, and it's helpful for people like you to talk to normal people about that because a lot of people look from afar and don't understand how much failure happens before somebody's successful, you know? So from behind the scenes, you don't see that. But um, speaking of the success, like, man, this, okay. So you went through this crazy journey. You became one of the best boxers in the world and then had this autoimmune disease hit you. You recovered, got back into boxing, and then you decided to retire and you started a new company and then that flourished. So kind of explain like what made you start that company, um, any partners you have, kind of just give us the, the evolution of, of Soul. Yeah, you know, I, I co-founded it a couple of years ago with my sister. Um, she also has a, a big podcast, um, Angie Lee Show, and she helps a lot of women and it's in that coaching world. So um, we are lucky that with my audience and her audience that we kind of had an organic push, but I started using CBD about three, maybe four years ago plus. I mean, I was on a constant journey. I was reading all the literature. I was studying everything I could for my own pain, right? So initially it was for selfish reasons because I wanted to perform better, get back in the ring. I wanted to get off these painkillers. I wanted to get off all the BS that they, you know, every time I stepped into a doctor's office, they just wanted to write me a prescription. I was like, guys, you already got me on six. Like, when is the answer? When is, is eight enough? Is 10 enough? So CBD was one of the things that I tried to discover this world of low risk, high reward and plant medicine, really. So it was really a, a thing that started helping me with inflammation, started helping me with anxiety. Sleep was massive for me. And that's when you get most of your recovery, especially as an athlete, you're tearing your muscles down, sleeping, getting in good REM cycles is vital, right? So um, I started taking CBD and loving it. And I started taking CBD without THC removed because I was getting drug tested. And after a year or two, I was like, man, this stuff is the real deal. It helped me get off anti-anxiety medicine. Um, it helped me sleep. It helped me with inflammation. So I started diving in, learning more. And then I came to my sister and I was like, why don't we, you know, create a little business and help people out here? Why don't we, we had no intentions of it really growing or being massive. We just wanted to help people and do a little side hustle. And, you know, so we hired a few people to run it, but really small because I was still in my career. Um, but now we're two plus years in, I've got 13 people working for me. Um, we're doing thousands and thousands of orders every single month. We've helped countless amount of people, the testimonials come in and that's what gets me motivated now is like when I get a DM or a message from somebody saying, you know, I haven't been able to sleep. This is helping me. I have terrible back pain. This is helping me. My anxiety is through the roof. Thank you for helping me with this. So that was really the origin of the business of soul CBD and why it took off. And I also wanted people to know and understand where it was coming from, right? So I'm someone that there's huge implications if I fail a drug test um, on my life, on you know on my career and everything. So I wanted people to know this is something I'm taking every single day. I'm literally in the fields, looking at the hemp, looking at the process of manufacturing. Like I know every single step along the way, it's all made here organically in the United States. So I think that's important too in, in a world of CBD, especially in cannabis where it's really kind of unregulated and there's a lot of unknowns. So that was important to me, but to be honest, we just wanted to help people. And next thing I knew we needed to hire more and hire more and start growing. And it was kind of a beautiful thing for me to transition from because my biggest fear was what's next, man. Like my entire identity was an athlete. I have so many buddies that retired from the NFL or they're fighters and that I've trained with. And that's the scariest thing is like when it's your identity, it's so scary of, you know, who am I without it? So soul has been a beautiful way for me to kind of transition into something that I'm passionate about. And I feel identity now with helping other people get out of pain. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for that, man, because I was so scared of wondering what's next and, you know, how do I chase that feeling of a purpose again? And I really found it in this company. And so I'm, you know, I'm blessed and very grateful. I think it's, uh, it, it's, 
I read this in a book recently, but it was talking about being process oriented versus outcome focused. And, mm. you know, they talk about like Olympic athletes who train their whole life to get on that podium. And then when they do and they're done, it's like depression. What now? You know, so I think if, if you look at that journey, like what fulfilled them, it's the process. It's not standing on that podium. It's, it's getting to that point. So I think that's like the smartest thing you could do is like, as you know, you're kind of getting these signs like, man, I, I, I'm not going to be able to fight people in this ring for the rest of my life. Like we know that. Right. And how do I transition that process to keep some kind of process going to continually stay motivated and fulfilled? Yeah. I, I think you got to find purpose and I still struggle with it, man. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Like, I, there's nights I wake up and I still miss that feeling. I, it felt like such purpose and identity and that adrenaline rush you get to jump in the ring in front of 20,000 people. It's something I don't think I'll ever replace, but I've come to terms in knowing that, you know, there is a life after sports and for anybody kind of transitioning into a new career, you got to find purpose, man. If I jumped into something that I didn't feel driven towards and, and felt purpose with, um, I would, I would be really, really depressed, but it's something I really still struggle with. You know, I just retired earlier this year, so it hasn't been that long. Um, but I'm glad, grateful that, you know, soul CBD has kind of given me this community and more important, a purpose to kind of like help people. So yeah, if, if you're purpose driven, you know, the rest will fall in line. Do you, do you think that's what, I mean, one of the things that I really admire about what you guys do in your company is, is, I mean, you haven't been around that long, but you've grown so quick. So the fact that you're a seven figure CBD company already, do you think behind marketing and, and all the stuff that we have to do as business owners, do you think that a lot of what drives that growth is the passion is the, is the fact that like, it's not just a product that you want to sell. It's a product that you use and you want people to experience that feeling. Do you like, how much does that play a role? It completely plays a role. And I think the, the blessing of why we've grown so fast is because we didn't start this to say we want to make $5 million, $10 million run rate, 50. There, there were no metrics in mind, to be honest, which, you know, I'm sure a lot of MBAs think is foolish to start a business that way. We just, we started with purpose and we had no idea where it was going to go. So I think that authenticity wins the day, man, like especially in branding and DTC it's such a crowded space. So for me and Angie to not only be co-founders, but brother sisters who love it, take the stuff every single day and really spread that message. We realized that it was brand and community first, um, you know, really building that community and then the brand and then, you know, all the other uh, knobs that you turn to increase marketing spend and, and different verticals and all that, all that stuff. But for us, it was really building that like authenticity and community first. And I think that, that gave us a lot more fuel to put in the engine, so to speak. And um, now the momentum has just been carrying us. And, and at the end of the day, it's product, right? Um, so many of our customers are returning customers. We've got um, you know, thousands of subscribers monthly, which is a huge indicator that it just works. And I always tell people, I'm like, CBD isn't the end all be all, but it's one of the puzzle pieces that I think has helped a lot of people. And, I encourage people to always look for themselves. Look into everything you're putting in your body, whether it's any type of supplement, any type of plant medicine, doctors, ask more questions, man. Like dig into the COAs, the third-party lab verification if they have it. Learn what you're putting in your body because for so many years, I didn't. I just trusted other people. It didn't serve me. So while CBD and other things are great for me, everybody's unique. Maybe it's not great for you. Maybe something else works. but Really find that out. Like your gut and your intuition is the best doctor you're ever going to have in your life, period. So you need to listen to that and do your own research and stop relying on people who are wearing a white coat and no disrespect to the medical, you know, a lot of doctors, I have a lot of doctors who are friends, but you know, they're not taking nutrition classes really as they're seeing, get their degree. Like that's something they're not aware of. So I think that people are becoming, um, you know, uh, more understanding of this, that you need to think about what you're putting in your body on a daily basis and care about it. So, well, and it's, it, CBD is, is a, like a new age of medication, you know, like I think, again, nothing against doctors, doctors are brilliant, but a lot of what they learn 
some of it's outdated or some of it's just not refreshed to what's coming out. And I think like my dad, uh, who is, he, he takes CBD, uh, quite often and he had, he just had a hip replacement, but he had hip pain for years. Right. And they would prescribe him these like high dose ibuprofen and painkillers and wash that down with a couple shots and the pain's gone, you know, but like at a certain point when he was like, Oh, you know, I'm going to like, I'm going to stop taking that. And I'm going to, I'm going to cut out drinking for a little bit. And he realized how much pain he was in really. And that's when he started kind of exploring some of these other things too. Um, Cause they were actually using it on their dog. And he was like, I should be using this too, <laughs> you know? And so he ended up using it, some of it, but um, I'd love to get into some of the application here, man. Like uh, for athletes, for, uh, I mean, a lot of people listening, like some of the questions we get, number one, there's a lot of athletes or, people like myself, I don't compete in anything, but I treat my body and train my body like an athlete, right? So there's a lot of those people listening to this. And there's also a lot of people who are business owners trying to start companies, they are dealing with stress and anxiety, because I get questions about all the time. It's something that I've dealt with over the years tremendously. Um, So if you can kind of go down the line, man, and give us like more information on why we should be using CBD for what, how to take it kind of like the whole intro and rundown. Yeah, well, you know, CBD is a compound that's found in both marijuana and hemp. Um, You know, marijuana basically has higher levels of THC, which is the psychoactive element of it. Um, CBD has no psychoactive element. So it's a compound that affects your endocannabinoid system. And actually all mammals have an endocannabinoid system naturally occurring. We've known that for years. That's why it works also on dogs. Like we have little dog treats and, um, and whatnot. But Basically what it's doing is it's putting your body, your nervous system into homeostasis. Um, that's why it's incredible how it affects, it's, it's anti-inflammatory in, it, in its nature in and of itself. So it, it definitely helps with like recovery, um, but it also helps with anxiety, sleep, and putting you into more of that homeostasis um, state. So, you know, the endocannabinoid system is something we've known about in the, med- in the medical community for years and years. We're just learning now about how THC and CBD um, affect certain receptors, which end up affecting the whole body. So, um, you know, a lot of data and science is coming out now. And one of the most beautiful things that I love is that there's no toxicity with CBD. So you can't even say that about Advil, aspirin, ibuprofen. You can run to Walgreens right now, take an entire bottle of um, Tylenol and kill yourself. So why I say low risk, high reward is the beautiful thing about CBD is we're finding that with no toxicity, um, you really can't overdose on it. Um, obviously, if you get to a, and the same thing with THC, you, you really in a lot of these plant medicines, you don't see deaths correlated to it. So it's a very safe drug. Now, how much people should take and where it's being sourced from, all that is very important and things that the studies and literature still need to catch up on. But, um, you know, I'm someone that takes 50 to 100 milligrams a day of CBD. Granted, <laughs> I got punched in the face for 10 years straight. So I definitely need a lot of it. And sometimes I'll take even more. But um, it really depends on what, what you're looking to get from it. And I usually tell people to start lower, start around 15, 20 milligrams and work your way up and see what works for your body. Think of it more as a supplement, right? Think of it more as like turmeric where... Um, it becomes more efficacious as it builds up in your body, in your endocannabinoid system um, over the days and weeks and months. Um, although a lot of people actually will notice effects within you know, 30 to 45 minutes their first time. Um, but if that's not you, use it and build it up in your system, but just know it's safe. It's safe to interact with other things. And I think it's a, a beautiful way to kind of open people's mind to, I mean, listen, this was a schedule one drug not too long ago, right? Schedule one means no therapeutic or health benefits. You got to be out of your mind if you think that cannabis, hemp, CBD has no therapeutic benefits, yet the United States government considered schedule one like heroin. So we're finally getting to, I'm hoping one day, uh, completely legalize cannabis and hemp. But what are we talking about here? The only reason the government's doing that is because they haven't figured out how to make money off of it. Yeah, because it's a plant that people grow and it's been on this earth for thousands of years. But the fact that people die from opioids that doctors are writing every single day, and that's no issue. But yet, cannabis schedule one drug federally is absolutely outrageous. But you're seeing the mindset and ideology changing every single day, which I couldn't be more excited about. I mean, I can't tell you how many friends who had terrible concussions were in the NHL, NFL, or military 
who have PTSD, dealing with depression, anxiety, that plant medicine helped them heal. It helped them become better fathers, better mothers, and we're demonizing it as a government. So I'm here to try to push the, the mindset that the earth and plants have such incredible healing powers and we shouldn't demonize it. I mean, it should not be schedule one drug. It's just absolutely outrageous. It, it, it sounds crazy when you, when, you, when you discuss it like that. It literally sounds insane that what is legal compared to what's not. And it's, it's, it's sad, but it is, I think it is changing. You know, it, it's changing and it's going the right direction for sure. Is there, um, I'm not as familiar with the literature as you are, I'm sure. So um, I know there's a ton of anecdotal and I'm aware of a ton of anecdotal just because I know so many people who take CBD and swear by it. Is there any uh, literature to show any neurological changes in a positive way? Like we talk about it relieving stress, anxiety, stuff like that. Is there anything that we can see on a chemical level or anything going on that's changing how our brain operates or function? Or is it more of an anecdotal um, experimental kind of thing right now? So there are some PubMed studies out right now that detail, um, you know, whether it's fighting anxiousness, whether it's fighting inflammation markers that are showing really, really good results of certain amounts of CBD. Um, I'm not sure on the neurological element in terms of like, if you do spec scans or certain brain scans, um, but we can prove that it is affecting the endocannabinoid system. It is reducing inflammation. It is reducing anxiety, which is a little bit tough because something like anxiety and depression doesn't have clear cut markers, right? Um, you can't really take a blood test and see you're, you know, eight out of 10 depressed. So in that aspect, you just have to, and the same thing with, you know, prescription depressants, you just, you have to go off how people feel. Um, but there is a lot more studies in the literature showing that it is affecting our brains, our endocannabinoid system and our nervous system to help with all these different things. I just think point blank, most studies in the United, in the United States are backed. It's very expensive and time consuming to get through, right? Yeah. So until this completely becomes uh, regulated by the FDA, that's when you'll see more, more and more literature, more and more studies, but it is out there. I mean, you can Google it, PubMed, a lot of different studies on top of the anecdotal evidence, um, which is really, really promising. But, you know, point blank, the drug companies aren't going to spend money to study this when they can't make money on it unless they patent it, which they've already tried and failed. So um, that's kind of where you see that resistance there. Is there any uh, reason as to why CBD would be more effective with THC versus without? I've heard, I don't remember where I heard this, but I heard almost it's like uh, when all the cannabinoids are together, they function a little bit better. And the way it processed in my brain was because I'm, I'm a nutrition guy. So well, with protein, you know, we can have a couple amino acids, but if we have the whole amino acid pool, the, the entire profile, we're going to get more out of that protein source. Is mm -hmm. it similar to that? Or can you extract just that one cannabinoid and still get all of the benefits that we're after? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's known as the entourage effect. That's something that is still kind of um, argued about. There are some studies that show it helps. There are studies that it doesn't. It really depends on the terpenes in it and how much of the other cannabinoids are in it we decided to go take out strip out all the thc for many reasons a lot of people they're either worried with drug testing right now or they're worried about um you know being high they they don't like how like me myself i don't really i don't smoke much i don't enjoy thc it makes me groggy i don't really feel good so i'm someone that thc kind of adversely affects so for us at soul we really stick with cbd only products but having said that I do think that there is and could be big benefit with THC. I've seen it for painkillers with other cannabinoids that we, that, you know, people add in as well for that entourage effect. Um, we just don't really have the clear data to, to prove that yet. Um, CBD does the heavy lifting. I think we all kind of know that. So are there little anecdotal, um, you know, effects of the other terpenes and cannabinoids? I think there could be. Um, but you know, for us right now, we kind of decided to stick with CBD for, for all those reasons. Um, but I think that once things become more, um, organized and, and, uh, legalized, I'd definitely be open to, um, adding more THC to the products if that's what our consumer base wants. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I, I would much rather have no THC just because of how I feel, but, um, it was an interesting thought process because, uh, it's comforting to know that, like you said, that CBD does the heavy lifting. I'm like, that's obviously what I'm after. Um, what would be your like athlete's guide or athlete's protocol using your product or using any CBD product for that matter? 
That's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of topicals do really well. So um, first of all, whether not to be too, you know, uh, whether you choose Soul CBD or, or another company, I, I just want people to make sure they're choosing a company that has third party lab verification. And one thing we do is we actually test the third party test. So we double blind test a lot of it. So make sure that a lot of your stuff is coming from the United States. It's sourced here. You understand where it's coming from. There are other companies that do that, but they're very rare. A new study just came out that said like 71% of CBD companies um, did not have the same amount or the same ingredients in their, in their products that they claim to have. So no matter who you go with, just make sure you kind of do your research and study that. Um, but for athletes in particular, the topicals work really well. I put that on my back and joints all the time. That's very efficacious, gets into the blood system. Um, I would say higher dosages for athletes, like they put their body through more. Um, generally, when you take a dropper underneath your tongue, it's known as taking it sublingually. We do that for a lot of different products, but that's been known to enter the blood brain barrier faster and been the most efficacious way and bioavailable way to get the most CBD in your body. So especially for athletes, I would, you know, hope that they kind of do that sublingual and really increase their, uh, their milligrams. I love that. Yeah. I think, uh, in, in tropicals, obviously lotions, ointments, things like that, correct? Yeah. Topicals, lotions, creams, um, you know, the sublinguals are droppers. So, you know, like I said, I'm taking 50 to hundred milligrams a day. Um, I think that's important for athletes. Another thing is sleep. Um, CBD has been known to help with sleep a ton, mixing that with melatonin. So especially for athletes getting that rest and recovery overnight, you got to be putting at least 25 milligrams in, in your body at night, start to calm down at night um, and help your body kind of heal and recover. So um, yeah, but it's one of those things that there's no specific uh, protocol necessarily. Like it really depends on so many different factors of um, you know, your body fat percentage, what other things you're taking, how hard you're working out. So that's kind of why I tell people to play with the dosages and times, but the sleep is paramount, man. That that's been huge for me to really finally get some good sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to that with, uh, I started a business, uh, right as, uh, my wife got pregnant. So wow. like the first two years of like real serious growth and grinding was her being one and two. So she's almost three now. So uh, it was the same thing. It was like just no sleep trying to, so this year has been like my year to like, all right, let me get back to health and sleep and, and functioning better. And, and it's amazing like how many productivity hacks and morning routines and all this stuff that I've always been so into because I love kind of like, I know there's no hacks, like you got to do the work, but I love hacks and biohacks, all this stuff. And it's funny how like just sleeping enough will just wipe out all those little tricks and tips I was trying to use to, to be more productive. And, uh, and, and CBD is, is actually something I take every single night. Um, and it's nice that you, with the topicals, like when you said, like, you can't really overdose. So like, for example, we, we had a uh, topical and I was having my wife put it on. She, she gets like super bad restless legs. So I was like, Hey, put on your legs. Well, how much? I was like, it doesn't matter. She was like, well, isn't there like a dosage? I was like, I mean, not really just, just put it on like <laughs> no harm, no foul. Like, don't worry about it. Exactly. What else do you like to use um, to help with sleep now? Um, I was using uh, droplets for a long time and then uh, just like a, a, an external sleep supplement. So just oh. straight CBD and then, and then uh, like a melatonin yeah. mix of, of sorts. I like the melatonin too. I, I think, you know, a certain three to nine milligrams, I've noticed kind of that area really, really helps with me with the melatonin as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man. So before we wrap up, I'd love to, I'd love to, for you to kind of, showcase your brand uh tell us like basically where people can find stuff how to how to order it where they can follow your your work i think you guys are um have you ever read the book start with why i'm sure my sister has it sounds familiar uh no i haven't no. i'm almost surprised that you that you didn't immediately like shake your head like yes because yeah. when you're talking about your story of, of starting this company and, and the purpose behind it and all that it's start with why is a book that it basically talks about the stories of all these businesses that were passion driven and how they grew. And, uh, and your story fits right in that book. Like it would literally fit the pages perfectly because, mm -hmm. um, so 
the reason I'm saying that is because I want people to be able to go check out that story, you know, um, on your Instagram, on your YouTube. Um, I mean, just the intro video to your guys' product is amazing of, of the story behind it. So um, I'd love for you to share basically like shameless plug away and just give us everything you can to let us know where to get it, what we should be getting from you guys, so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, I love that you say that because one of the things I like to say all the time is, um, you know, when you have a big enough why, you can find any way how. I might be stealing that from Tony Robbins or something. So I'm not going <laughs> that. to that's mine. But yeah, I got to check that book out. Um, so yeah, I mean, shameless plug. Um, the company's called Soul CBD. The website is mysoulcbd.com and that's soul, uh, S-O-U-L. Um, same thing with our Instagram, uh, at mysoulcbd. And then you can come chat with me. Um, I've, I've written a lot for different publications on pain, anxiety, health, and I love doing that. I love connecting with people. And so reach out to me at, at official Mike Lee. Um, and you know, if you have any questions, health, health tips, hacks, all that kind of stuff, I love connecting with people. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the company. We're really proud of it. We're helping a ton of people. Um, I'm excited for 2021, especially now, man, I mean, people more than ever are dealing with anxiety and fear in a way that we never were. And it's impacting our immune system in such a terrible, terrible way. So if we can find ways, I'm not just talking about CBD, but we can find ways to really um, stay calm and to continue to promote healing through that and bring down our stress, it's going to help our immune system. So that's what I'm excited about in 2021. I, I, I want to highlight on something you said a while back too, just before uh, people go check out stuff, because a lot of people will listen to this podcast. And if I say soul CBD, they'll just go, they'll, they'll trust me. Right. And I, and I appreciate that but you said something about looking at the testing behind the products that I think is really valuable for people to consider with anything that you consume. Um, one of the, the supplement companies that we're partnered with is Legion. And that's one of the reasons why I love them is because they put the lab testing publicly. Um, the hard part about CBD is that it's not everywhere. So I don't even know if Labdoor has it, but Labdoor is a great website where you can see like, okay, these whey proteins, powders, which ones rank the highest of like, they're actually giving you what they say they're giving you on the label. Kind of like what you said, 70% of CBD companies don't do. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing a transparent company like yourself that you're like, I want to put this out there because it's not in mass publications right now because it's a new thing and you're putting it out there to be transparent. I think that says a lot about your company and, and people, I don't want people to listen to what you said and just kind of breeze by it. Like I want them to really, really understand that. Yeah. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. And that's why I'm always like, listen, if you don't choose soul, choose a company that does it because I know what it was like going through that and putting shit in your body that just ended up hurting you or it wasn't enough or it wasn't in there what, what they said it was. So yeah, I mean, that's the great point. I'm, I love that the company you guys work with do that as well. I mean, it's important that you're learning about where it's coming from and um, where it's sourced and how it's sourced. And then most importantly, if it's tested, if it's third party tested. Um, so, you know, I think people are really understanding that. I think that there's a new wave of consciousness that understands how important it is to really dive into that. So yeah, I love that you're at the forefront of that too, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, all right. One more time before I let you go, uh, where can people buy your products? So I can link all that. I'll link your Instagram and everything else in the show notes as well. Yeah. So my and then check us out on Instagram at my um, that's where you can get all the good stuff. Perfect, man. Thanks again for coming on, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.